What is going on guys? So in this video, we are going to go over my top five monster sets for PVP in the Blackwood chapter. So whether you are a returning player or just starting out, this video will help bring you up to speed on all of the best sets for PVP. This video will cover all of the important topics, what the set does, where you can get it, and my recommended classes to wear it on, and much more. I'm doing a whole video series on this. So this is episode two. The first episode I did was the top five crafted sets. This one is gonna be the monster sets. And for the third one, let me know what you guys want down in the comment section below. Regardless, if you are watching this in the future, I am making a full playlist on this so you guys can watch all of those videos in one convenient spot. But before we deep dive into it, if you guys enjoy my content, don't forget to subscribe on my YouTube and have post notifications on so you never miss an upload. Also, I live stream on Twitch every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Pink and I have the best live streams on Twitch. I can guarantee you guys, you will laugh or learn something every single stream. And with that intro out of the way, let's get right into it. So for the first set, we have Zawal the Ever Wakeful. This gives a one piece of maximum stamina, a two piece when you break free, you release a wave of watcher energy, causing enemies within eight meters of you to become feared for three seconds. You gain 34 weapon and spell damage for each enemy hit up to six enemies for seven seconds. You can find the Zawal set in Imperial City. You can get the monster helm from the Elven Gardens boss, Zawal the Ever Wakeful. To get the shoulders, you need to go to the Telfar Equipment Lockbox Merchant. Now I am on the Evanheart pack side right now. So you just go to this guy and you talk to him. Now you can get it two different ways. You can test your luck here with the Imperial City Mystery Coffer for 10,000 Telvar stones, or you can buy the specific box of the Zowal Ever Wakeful set for 20,000 Telvar stones. So this is my preferred way on buying the Zowal the Ever Wakeful set. Now, it is random on what you're going to get light, medium, or heavy, but that's going to be basically any monster set you get. So hopefully you get lucky and get the piece you need. So this is actually a newer set that just released from the Blackwood chapter, and it honestly is a very, very good set. The main reason being is this helps get people off of you, and it provides a good, decent CC. Now, the classes I would run this on are going to be Magcrow and Magden. The main reason being is they have some terrible, terrible stuns. Uh, Arctic Blast on the Warden is not good. It it's okay like you can sun people with it but you have to be right on top of their forehead with it and this provides you a more consistent cc than arctic blast ever could and for the crow you're going to have access to bone totem which really isn't that great most of them will use flame reach but that's not going to be good in outnumbered scenarios because it only focuses one person so whenever you start getting pressured yourself and you get stunned and you break free this set procs and you're getting a little bit of weapon and spell damage and you're also stunning people and fearing them in an area of effect around you so it is a very solid set uh it's good for anti-gank as well uh, especially since there's a lot of bombers and gankers right now it's going to stun them immediately as soon as you break free one thing that maybe not a lot of people realize is this cp passive called slippery actually works with this set so whenever you're affected by disabling effects whenever you're stunned you automatically break free at no cost so this can affect occur once every 21 seconds so this cp passive is very good because it's going to automatically break you free and it's going to stun people immediately without you having to even press a button I think for other classes, this could be solid, but I just don't think they really need it. I think they could benefit from some other monster sets that we have in this video. For the next set, we have Balor. This gives a one piece of weapon and spell damage, and the two piece, when you use an ultimate ability, you gain weapon and spell damage equal to the amount of the total ultimate consumed and physical and spell penetration equal to 23 times the amount for 12 seconds. So in order to get Balor, you have to have the Wolf Hunter DLC. So you basically what you do is you go to Green Shade and you travel into March of Sacrifices. You do this dungeon on Veteran and you, the last boss will drop the helmet. So in order to get the shoulder, you have to go to Urgalog, the Chief Bane. She's gonna be in every single Undaunted Enclave area. You talk to her and you have to buy the shoulders with Undaunted keys. So they cost five keys and you have a chance to get a Vicosa shoulder or a Balor shoulder. Now it is random on whichever one you're gonna get. Your luck could be great. Your luck could not be great. It just really just depends on, you know, kind of how lucky you are. But this is where you get the shoulder piece of Balor. So Balor is actually one of the best monster sets that we have right now in PVP. It is just so amazing. So let me kind of explain this two piece a little bit more in depth. So whatever ultimate you have, if you have 500 ultimate or if you have 300 ultimate, doesn't matter what ultimate you have, you're gonna get that weapon and spell damage of that value. So whenever you cast an ultimate, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's end cap, soul assault, 
uh, Destral Ultimate. If you have 500 ult, you're gonna gain 500 weapon and spell damage. And you're also gonna gain 23 times 500 or 11,500 physical and spell penetration. So do keep that in mind, depending on your build, obviously more costing ultimates like in an actual pvp scenario having an ultimate cost of 150 to 200 is going to give you more damage on your Balor versus using an end cap on a nightblade a 70 ultimate the ideal classes for Balor are pretty much any stamina class and some magic classes like the magical warden magic nightblade and the magic dk the main reason being for stamina classes is the weapon damage is going to scale a lot better simply because a lot more stamina classes use medium armor and they get 2% extra weapon damage bonus for each piece of medium they have. So it's gonna scale more and give them overall more damage. But also stamina classes typically have a lower amount of penetration. So getting this Balor proc, getting, giving you 23 times the amount of ultimate consumed is really gonna beef up your pen and give you a lot of damage. And for the magic classes, it's mainly for the double dip to get the extra penetration, but also the spell damage is nice nonetheless, but you're mainly going for this, trying to get your pin as high as possible, especially on the magic DK, that's the way to go uh, for magic classes this patch. So let's proc our Balor very, very quickly. So all we do is hit our ultimate and our, our hands and feet turn red. That's how you know Balor's up and it lasts for 12 seconds. So it's just a very, very consistent, solid set. Never have to worry about uh, when you're trying to go offensive, whenever you, whenever you use your ultimate, you're automatically going to gain a lot of weapon damage and penetration. With that being said, Balor is one of the best monster sets right now in PvP, and I highly recommend you get it. So next we have Blood Spawn. This gives a one-piece stamina recovery. A two-piece, when you take damage, you have a 6% chance to generate 13 ultimate and increase your physical and spell resistance by 3,731 for five seconds. This effect can occur once every five seconds. So Blood Spawn does not require any DLC. This is a base game set. So you just come to Glenumbra and you travel to Spindle Clutch 2. And you want to make sure you do this on the veteran. Don't do Spindle Clutch 1. Spindle Clutch 2 is what Blood Spawn drops from. This is how you get the helmet. You just kill the last boss. And for the shoulder, you talk to Maj Oliver Goth. I don't know how you say her name. But we're in the blue. We're in Daggerfall zone right now. So you talk to her. And you go to the bottom. And it says the Spindle Clutch Coffer. Just like with Balor, Blood Spawn, it is the luck of the draw. Whatever you get Swarm Mother or if you get Blood Spawn. So the Blood Spawn set is actually one of the best monster sets to use uh, for 1vx. So the main reason being is the 13 ultimate. Now, people will say, okay, you get 13 ultimate. But it can proc every 5 seconds and you just have to take damage. So any damage you receive, you can get extra armor and ultimate. And more ultimates mean more damage if you're using like a damage ultimate or more healing if you're using a healing ultimate this is an overall great set if you really don't know what to run on your build at all slap on blood spawn and you can kind of adjust what you want from there so blood spawn is very simple to proc it i mean you just take damage and it's just a random chance so you know if these guys hit us and we'll turn to stone i guess this guy wants to help us out a little bit but we're trying to proc our blood spawn buddy so you just take damage, 6% chance. It used to be a lot higher. Um, let's see here, come on, proc blood spawn, please. It's definitely better outnumbered because you you know you take a lot more damage. So we turn to stone there and our blood spawn's proc'd and we gain ultimate. Very, very simple. Uh, this thing has a lot of upside to it that I think newer players don't give it enough credit for. It used to be a lot better back in the day, but uh, blood spawn is just a solid monster set so for ideal classes any stamina build because it obviously gives you stamina recovery uh, they can really really use this set a lot to get a little bit tankier and get a little bit more ultimates but also some magic classes can use this as well especially healers uh, to get a little bit tankier and get the ultimate regeneration because you know you could proc a healing ultimate uh, pretty much any class can use blood spawn you can't go wrong with it it's probably one of the universal sets out there that you can use on any build and you will do just fine so the next set we have Malabeth, or it's also called the Scourge Harvester. This gives you a one piece of maximum health. And for the two piece, when you take damage, you have a 10% chance to create a beam that steals health over six seconds from the attacker. While the beam holds, you gain major vitality, increasing your healing received by 16%. The beam breaks if the enemy moves further than eight meters away. This effect can occur once every six seconds and scales off of your maximum health. 
So the Malabeth set, just like Bloodspawn, is a base game set. So anybody can get this. There is no DLC required. So you travel to Stormhaven and you go to the Wayrest Sewers. And you make sure you want to do Wayrest Sewers 2 and not 1. That's how you get the helmet. For the shoulder, you go to the Undaunted Enclave. Now we are on the yellow side, all of my Dominion. You talk to Maj Al Ragoth and is right here on the bottom. So just like with Battle or and Bloodspawn, you're buying this with Undaunted keys. And you do have a random chance of getting the Slime Crawl set and also the Scourge Harvester set. So Malabeth was actually kind of nerfed a little bit in Blackwood. The reason being is it now scales off your maximum health. So the Beam's health bonus that you get, the 4053 health, is going to scale off on maximum health. So the more health I get, the bigger the heal is going to be. So the lower health you have, the lower the healing from the set is going to be. But it does not affect the buff you get. So you're still getting Major Vitality, 16% increased healing. And this is the main reason why you're using this set. It buffs all your heals. So, you know, my cleanse, my rune focus, uh, my rally, all this is getting buffed by my Malabeth. Okay. Only when the beam is up, though, not whenever it's down. So, basically, it's just like Blood Spawn. You take damage like this, and you just sit here, and it'll be like a purple beam that will hit the person if it'll proc whenever. There it is. And there's the Malabeth. So, all of my healing is getting increased by 16%. While I have the beam, I think the classes that are, that are going to use this, in my opinion, would be Sam and the DK is probably going to see the most benefit from this simply because they already have major mending on their build. The, this is going to make Sam DK is really, really beefy. But any other class that has a high amount of health, probably 32, 33K plus, I would recommend. Uh, I'm honestly thinking about using this on a warden with like 40K health. Uh, Stam or mag this can also be used on healers as well to really make them beefy because a lot of healers get focused And if they can increase their healing even more uh, on themselves by 16% with you know major mending or minor mending depending on if they're on a Templar or a warden getting the major mending buff This can really help them stay alive and you know the more health they have again the more healing they're gonna get from this set and you know that's all gonna be you know make them a lot tankier so malabeth is just an all-around solid set it's kind of a little bit different than using blood spawn but it, it's using the same similar application it's gonna proc a little bit more than blood spawn it's gonna heal you instead of giving you you know resistances and ultimate back but it's overall a solid set and i really recommend you get it and for the final set we have engine guardian this gives a one piece of health recovery a two piece whenever you use an ability you have a 25 percent chance to summon a dwemer automation to restore 550 stamina or magic or 1955 health to you every 0.5 seconds for six seconds this effect can occur once every 10 seconds so just like with blood spawn and malabeth engine guardian is a base game set so anybody can get this there's no dlc required so to get the helmet, travel to Deshaun and do Dark Shade Caverns 2. Don't do Dark Shade Caverns 1. Do this on Vet and you'll get the helmet from the last boss. To get the shoulder, uh, we are at the Undaunted Enclave again. We'll talk to Maj Al Ragoth. So just like with all the other monster sets, you have a random chance to get the Sentinel set or a chance to get the Engine Guardian set. So the Engine Guardian set is just like Bloodspawn, man. It's very easy to use. You just use abilities. You just hit your skills like normal and it procs for you and give you free resources. Now there is kind of some counterplay to this. So whenever your Engine Guardian does proc um and you proc it like this people can bash it and it'll stop giving you resources so uh you do have to keep that in mind but the engine guardian is so smart now i remember when engine guardian used to be so dumb that uh it wouldn't stay with you at all like this thing moves so fast compared to what it used to uh this thing really stays on you and that's what a lot of people complain about engine guardian is it just stays on you and it makes you a nuisance to hit the engine guardian does have a health pool so they can attack the engine guardian rather than you so uh, i've seen countless times uh people use an ultimate on me and it's actually on my engine guardian like a meteor or whatnot and my engine guardian takes the damage for me and i don't even take a, any damage for the meteor so the ideal classes for engine guardian can be pretty much any class I think it's mainly going to focus on magic classes, though there are a few stamina classes, like the Stam Night Blade that uses their cloak, uh, that can use the magic proc, as well as obviously a stamina proc if you're a Stam Blade, right? For magic classes, it's going to be like Magsork and Magic Necromancer. Magsork is really, really good with this set because they use their Dark Conversion to give them magic back, and they trade their stamina for magic. So obviously, if they get a stamina proc, it's not a waste because they can use that stamina to turn it into magic. For a few other classes like the magic necromancer uh it's a, a nice meat shield honestly uh the damage mitigation that you can get from this set 
it is honestly crazy like people hit this over you all the time and it really helps you stay alive but just having free resources is always nice engine guardian is just like one of those sets like blood spawn if you want to try to build and need free resources then engine guardian is a set for you so that is my list for the top five monster sets right now for the blackwood chapter i use these on pretty much 99 percent of my builds they are just so solid and so versatile on pretty much any class so for the next video, you guys are choosing that one. So let me know down below in the comment section if you want me to do the light armor sets, medium armor, heavy armor, or mythic items. Let me know down below. And that's it for this video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.